Aloha, it's Robert with Bufanet. Today's video is going to be about um, turning the board using rail steering. And I wanted to make this video because a lot of people like intuitively think if they lean on the side they're paddling on, it's going to help them kind of turn that way by leaning onto the rail. But actually rail steering is the opposite. Basically, if you're standing in the middle of the board and you lean on your rail, that curvature of the rail is going to make the board turn kind of away from the side you're standing on. So if you put your weight on your left foot and you paddle on the left side, it's going to make the board turn this way. And if you paddle, if you put your weight on the right side and you use your steering stroke to the left, and we really use that a lot with downwind boards because you kind of need, when you're going on a downwinder, you kind of need to be able to steer that longer board. So we use the rail of the board to turn it. And it's really noticeable. But once you get going a little bit faster and you're standing on the back of the board and you're planing and you're surfing, then on the back of the board, obviously you then you lean on the left rail, it'll turn left, and if you lean to the right, it'll turn right. But once you get up on the middle of the board, it's kind of the opposite. Lean left makes it turn right, lean right makes it turn left. And a lot of times when people start doing downwinders, they, they don't really know about the rail steering. And what happens is they'll, they'll start leaning on one rail, the board will turn away from them, and their body kind of keeps going straight, and the board turns, and the person keeps going straight, and they just fall off, you know? So I see that a lot. So it's something you kind of want to get be ready for and expect. So if you lean on a rail, it's going to turn away. So what you really want to do is if your board starts to tilt, it, instead of, um, you know, leaning on that side, you want to kind of lift up your opposite side and keep your weight over the board. So as long as you can keep your weight over the center of the board, expect the board to turn a little bit, then you can control that. You get asked a lot how to steer a race board or a long downwind board, downwind, um, and it's different from what you think. So on a normal surfing board, what you do is you mm -hmm. go to the tail, and then you stand and you turn it like a surfboard, and you lean to the way you want to turn. But that's totally different with a long race board or downwind board, because um, if you if you're in the middle of the board and you step that way, it's not going to turn that way. So the way you turn a race board or a downwind board is you get the board and you step on the outside foot. So if you're going to turn right, you step on your left foot and you unweight your right foot and you make the board tilt. So that gets off of its planing bottom, flat bottom and onto the edge. But what happens when you do that, if this is the curve of the board is when you tilt the board, you're going to sink the front rail into the water, the water is going to hit that curve and it's going to push the board that way. So that is a really effective way of turning the board from the middle of standing in the middle of the board. So um, you can try it on flat water, it works really well. Just start paddling and then wait to your left foot. And at the same time you wait, what's effective also is to do a little outstroke. So if you wait your outside foot and do an outstroke, the board's going to turn like that pretty good. And you'd be surprised how well it turns. So when we do downward runs, that's exactly how we steer the board in the buffs to get where we want to go. If I want to go that way, I wait this left foot and I steer it that way. And if I want to go that way, I wait the right foot and it goes that way. And I use a, I'm using a 18 foot board with no rudder. And um, I've actually worn races with this board. Um, it's lighter without the rudder, but I actually should put a rudder in it. Eventually I will. But I can steer this 18 foot race board using rail steering pretty effectively and get to the bumps where I want to go and um, it works pretty well that way. Yeah, so with regards to the unweighting of these boards as we turn them, uh, as we head out and we typically paddle a Hawaii Kai run and a lot of times we get into an area called Black Point and the, the chop will be coming on my left side and pushing me in. I want to go back out towards the bumps. So I will put all my weight on my right leg lifting the left rail out of the water and I'll do a wide paddle stroke, turning stroke with my paddle, allowing the board now that's the, the rail that's not in the water to almost lift up and skip over the direction I want. It, it, it makes it easy. Now I don't continue to do that for a long period of time, but it's just like a correction on the turn. Yeah. So yeah, the unweighting is just, yeah, that's how you do it. So the way I the way I see it is like the curvature of the rail. If you if you kind of push that in the water, it just kind of the rail follows or the you know you're pushing the curvature into the water. So when you push that rail into the water, it'll turn the way the the board is curved, right? So that's the way I kind of visualize it. You know, like so yeah, lean on the rail, lift up the the 
you basically want to keep your weight right over the middle like so you don't want to lean on one rail and then have all your weight on that side and you want to keep the weight over the middle so it's kind of more like you're lifting up the low the, the high side and then by pushing the rail into the water then falling that with the steering stroke will make it turn pretty easily and a lot of times too especially on these dugouts it, the boards are actually almost more stable when you have them up on a rail and you have less wetted surface so it's actually can be faster to ride the rail so sometimes um, you know sometimes you want lift and then having the flat bottom flat to the water creates more lift like you want to get start to plane and get to go faster but if you're just kind of um, trying to have let, lower friction putting the board on rail actually will, will make it go a little bit faster sometimes so this thing we're talking about the rail steering on the opposite rail it actually works not only for it works for all kinds of boards so you see a dugout here and then also the regular uh plane planing downwind boards and actually also prone paddleboard it works the same way prone paddleboarders have known this for years that you got to lean this way on your paddleboard to go that way so it's the same principle of the water hitting the bow and pushing the board that other direction um so but on this dugout for example you need to kind of always steer like that but if you're on a planing downwind board like a 14 footer with kind of a surfboard shape and you get on a huge big bump for sure if you run all the way back to the tail you can actually turn it like a surfboard that, there's no nothing wrong with that but those are the two positions you have to be in to make the different turns if you're in the middle you do the rail steering if you get a huge bump and you're dropping in like you're surfing a wave then for sure you can go back stand near the fin and turn it like a surfboard all right and then um do you also combine the um the rail steering with um with like crossbow turns or like um for the big board like that yeah. you sometimes have to use other steering maneuvers yeah because this board doesn't have a rudder i do have to actually sometimes just um stick the paddle in like this and actually do a crossbow turn with the paddle in the water so i don't do it too often because it slows you down but it it does actually work pretty good to do that and just get the nose to pull over especially if there's like a the wind because this board also has a tall rail so if the wind catches it it pushes the board and so um, if there's a kind of like a side off wind and um, I need to, it's pushing me out and I have a hard time rail steering into the wind, I'll do this crossbow turn to get the board pointing in a better angle, then start doing the rail steering again. Okay. And then is there like, I find like certain places on the wave, like a lot of times when you on, like in the trough of the wave is where it's the most effective, yeah, because the whole rail is in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, right. um... So, yeah, as soon as I catch the bump and you're kind of on the top coming down, that's the optimal time to try to steer the board and try to, because if you're on a bump and the board's like this, it can swivel easily if yeah. you're on the top of the bump, just starting to drop in. If you're in the trough, it also works pretty good too, but um, actually any part of that dropping in, it'll work. But um, the idea when you ride a bump, of course, that's a whole other subject, but we don't want to drop into the trough, we want to actually turn in. And go sideways to the bump so angle the board yeah right? angle the board like you're surfing a wave so ideally as you drop in that's when you want to do your steering so you angle with the bump and ride it that way rather than dropping in the trough and maybe stalling or hitting the front of the other bump in the back okay, okay so to summarize rail steering is if you're standing in the middle of the board and you lean on a rail to make the board turn kind of away from the side you're leaning on if you're standing on the back of the board it, the board will turn to the side you're leaning on, but in the middle, it's the opposite. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but um, just practice it. And it's a really great maneuver to, to use for downwind paddling and, and catching bumps. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Aloha.